Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Wind down the other week. I want to transition a little bit. I know I talked about this before in my previous video lessons, but I wanted to talk about 9-11 today. All right. I think it's very important that we talk about and discuss this event. And obviously, it's something that we should never forget. For many of you, you weren't even alive when this event happened. Uh, for me, I was in first grade. Obviously, I was very young. So it's something that I still remember to this day, what I was doing, what I was wearing, uh, you know, where I was at. And uh, it's one of those things, especially with current events, with Afghanistan and how we're withdrawing from that part of the Middle East, something that we can draw back to, we can think of and, and, and definitely make, make connections to. And the real reason why we were in the Middle East in the first place was, well, because of 9-11. So I want to share a video with you towards the end of this video lesson, but I want to get you the bell ringer so that you can have that. You can attach your bell ringers to the post. That should be all of them really for the week. And uh, I want to give you a grade for that. So please have that posted up, ready to roll. I'll have that assignment there for you shortly. So real quick, describe how women pushed for advancement in American society during the progressive era. What amendment was created for women's suffrage? So I'll give you a few seconds, pause the video, write down your response. I'm going to go over it. Okay, so the progressive era brought out a lot of change. Okay, we'll discuss some more minority groups and how they saw for opportunities, advancements in the workplace, in society, um, education, and for women today, the right to vote, right? Suffrage. So women push for this advancement by grouping together, coming together, forming different forms of unions, like the Women's Temperance Movement, okay, the Christian Trade Union League, right? I know I mentioned that yesterday and how that was very important. So these women were transitioning their roles in society. So before the progressive era, they're strict to the household. They're taking care of children. They're trying to teach them up as much as they could at home uh, with their basic reading, writing, okay, communicating talking, you name it. And it was very important. It was, it was really something that was amazing because women didn't have the opportunity to an education. So they were really teaching themselves and understanding writing, uh, you know, uh, you know, talking, uh, just communicating and reading on their own. And like I mentioned the other day, it was mostly straight from the Bible. A lot of their learnings, a lot of their teachings were about um, ethics about good character and basing off of religion so these women transition after the progressive era to holding jobs in the workplace having a right to vote having a say in government and having opportunities that they never had before so coming from the household strict to the household preparing food you know really uh, gardening right preparing uh, you know and taking care of the children uh, to actually what we know today opportunities in education, right to an education, opportunities in a workplace, uh, you name it. But it all happened with many progressive movements, right? Many progressive uh, key figures like Susan B. Anthony, Florence Kelly. Okay, I know I mentioned those two the other day as well, and how these advancements kicked off and gave opportunities for women. So there's many activist movements marching on political uh, buildings, uh, you know, marching into the streets of many areas and peacefully protesting their rights, their opportunities. They want opportunities in this new progressive era. And uh, a lot of it, again, mostly based off of religion, tradition, traditional values, fundamentalist values. Okay, again, I'll talk about that when we get to the 1920s, that clash between modernists and fundamentalists. But this is where it's emerging. This is where it's starting. And we see the 18th Amendment actually being passed, which is the prohibition. Okay, the Volstead Act, right? And uh, this is the sale of alcohol in the United States. And women viewed that, well, men working these long hours in these industries, in these factories, the only thing that they want to do is unwind, go to the bar, spend their money up at the bar. So women obviously frustrated about this uh, because there was no money for support for the family, for the children, to put food on the table. And there's a lot of physical abuse and altercations that occurred when the men returned home from the bar, from the saloon. So 
the women's temperance Christian or the women's Christian temperance movement formed to fight against some of these hardships, uh, the, these terrible conditions that occurred uh, during this this uh, this era, this time period, and to really bring about more opportunities for women. So again, coming together, grouping together, peacefully protesting in front of political uh, buildings, public officials to make sure that their voices are heard. All right, and then World War I comes around and women really take more of a role in society, filling the men's shoes in the factories, helping build up uh, you know, many war machines, armaments, weapons to prepare for warfare. And uh, not only that, but establishing the Red Cross and helping out any way they can to get these men back on the battlefield as nurses. And again, it's unfortunate. Uh, the only the, the only real change we see, the only opportunities given is after a conflict like World War I. It takes an, a, a conflict like that to push for more opportunities for minority groups and people. I'm not saying that and discrediting these, these unions. I'm not saying that these activist movements didn't work. I'm just saying World War I played a huge factor in gaining, gaining these opportunities for women in society, right? So yes, these movements helped. They benefited, right? They're grouping together, peacefully protesting, but at the same time, World War I had a huge play in that as well. All right, so that's the bell ringer. Make sure you guys please attach them. They're going to be due at midnight tonight, so make sure you have it done, completed. All right, so real quick, 9-11. Um, I was in first grade, like I said. It's a flashbulb memory for me. A flashbulb memory is something that a person will never forget. No, no matter where they're at, no matter what they've been doing, right, uh, no matter how long time has gone by, it's something that you can withdraw from your memory pretty quick. If you ever take me in psychology, we'll talk about that quite a bit. So it's 9-11. I was in first grade. I was sitting in class, and we didn't have televisions in every room. We didn't have the technology, obviously, like that. But I remember my teachers crying, right? I remember just being confused by the situation. I had no clue. I was too young to realize what was going on and to understand what was happening. And uh, once the event occurred, after school, I always walked home because I lived pretty close to the elementary school in Tri-Valley. So I was just kind of hanging around with the teachers as they're kind of looking over me until all the buses left. And I went to the office to do that. And they were watching some of the, the planes hit the buildings, uh, obviously the two planes that hit the World Trade Centers. And uh, obviously the Pentagon was impacted. And then later, plane landing out in the middle of western Pennsylvania. And uh, we, we all know what happened there and how that was something disturbing for many people. And this was really the first time America was attacked on home soil. Yeah, Pearl Harbor. Okay. That was time before that in 1941. So many people couldn't relate to that event, obviously. And uh, many people didn't have a connection to it like we did with 9-11 because this was out in Hawaii, out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. For the most part, this, uh, this island was still a territory at the time, right? It wasn't even a state yet. So again, people didn't really have that connect. Um, yes, it was a huge, a, a terrible event with uh, Pearl Harbor. But with 9-11, we see this impact right in our backyard, right? Right in New York City. And there's a fear of traveling on planes for a long, long time after that. That's why you see the security the way it is nowadays if you ever go to travel. So with 9-11, um, there's many different stories talking about the, the impact it has on people. And with over 3,000 Americans dying in the World Trade Centers just alone, okay, obviously impacting the Pentagon in a plane that crashed out in the middle of, uh, in the middle of really Pennsylvania, aiming for the White House. There's many people that died and reflect on this event. And uh, this was a time that the United States had to unify, had to come together to push on. And uh, I think this is something that we, we need to remember and we should never forget. But for me, I remember being at school and then going home and my mom had a hair salon in her house. And many, of the, many of the women there that were getting their hair cut were crying and I had no clue what was going on yet. So I went in to try to watch cartoons and it seemed like every 
every channel on television was just directed towards what was happening, what was going on, because this really was a huge impact. We were protected by, we are still protected by the oceans that separate us from Europe, from Asia. And all of a sudden, those oceans, this line of defense that we had for a long, long time, we still have today, we still can be attacked at any moment with these terrorist organizations like Al Qaeda. And uh, we can reflect on what's going on in Afghanistan today and realize, you know, obviously, this is the reason why we were there, to try to protect the world, the United States, against these terrorist organizations and these groups. And uh, us departing, leaving Afghanistan, there's a lot of fear for many people. Okay, we're literally giving that land back to the people that push for these events to occur with 9-11. All right, so I have a video attached. I really want you guys to watch it. I want to discuss it when we get back on Monday. It's about a, a lacrosse player at Boston College and how he was at the event of 9-11. And I think it's a really motivating story, right? Something that we should never forget and something that um, shows true heroism in these, these, uh, these crazy times. And Boston College... Still to this day, they always have a red ribbon game or a red bandana game commemorating and uh, in a memorial for this person. So I'm going to play that for you guys. Check it out. Again, attach your bell ringers so I can give you credit. Again, don't forget 9-11. Make sure you guys uh, look into it a little bit more. Do some research on it. I think it's very important that we constantly talk about that. All right. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Attach your bell ringers. Check out that video I've attached. See you later.